Hi there, I'm John from CNCRI.com and today we're going to water jet some stainless steel. For this project here, the customer needed one plate done and they're going to use it for a machine. Um, I'm not familiar with what the kind of machine it is. And basically they needed this made pretty quick. Uh, what we ended up doing is actually using the water jet cutter. And the reason for that is because of these little holes. Now they're very, very small and they're all over the plate. And what that causes is if we use your plasma cutter or laser on something like this here, you might end up with some heat affected zones. Now heat affected zones means that, you know, wherever the hole is, it starts to get hot. Then you have the next hole next to it. It gets hotter and hotter and hotter. And what could end up happening, doesn't always happen, but what could end up happening is the metal actually starts to warp a little bit on you. And then whenever you do other holes, well, they're gonna be out of spec because the, you know, the sheet moved a little bit this way, a little bit that way. Sometimes it's very pronounced, you could see it, and other times you don't even notice it until they bring it on site, they put the plate and they find out you know, the holes are off by an eighth of an inch, uh, or even less. And sometimes when you do high precision stuff like this, uh, that's a very big problem. Now the nice thing about water jet is it's an abrasive method of cutting. So if, hopefully I could focus on the edge here. But you can see here, it's a very, very beautiful sanded edge. And that's a dead giveaway that it was done with a water jet. If it was done with a laser or plasma, on the edges you actually end up seeing a kerf. So it's like a whole bunch of little lines, basically, as it's melting its way through the plate. But again, with water jet, you have the garnet, and what that is is abrading away the material. So that's why you end up with a sanded edge everywhere. Of course, on the inside of the holes too. Something I really like about water jet cutting is the precision you get without the heat. Now you gotta keep in mind that water jet cutting is done in a one pass process, meaning that let's say this material was three inches thick. You have to cut the whole three inches the whole way. And that's what's really cool because while you're cutting something much thicker, you actually can see the kerf on the edges sort of work its way through. So you, of course you go a lot slower and you end up getting the cut. Unlike, let's say a CNC router, we have to do multiple passes with a bit in order to create the depth that you need to cut out a piece. Uh, with plasma cutting as well, it's the same thing. You're cutting all the way through. And like water jet cutting, you actually have to cut the whole thing in one pass because you can't go over it one time and then go over that same spot a second time to go deeper. It just doesn't work that way. Because what you end up having happen uh, with the plasma cutter you get it very, very bad because the heat just builds up. Yeah. Going all the way through is a way to remove the heat. It's like a router where you have the chips. So you're removing the chips. Uh, the chips have heat in them. So that's why, again, with water jet cutting, when you're going around, you're, if you don't go all the way through, the water just shoots up everywhere and it just makes a mess. And if you go over that spot again, you're just creating more of a mess. So that's why, again, cutting all the way through. Now it's the same thing again with the laser, when you're cutting metal. You have to cut through it in one pass because otherwise you have sparks shooting up and it's just a mess. So all of these processes involving cutting metal, other than milling, uh, which I'll show some video of later, videos of later on, or CNC routing. Uh, mill is generally used for metal, CNC routing is everything but metal, generally speaking. Uh, so when milling you do multiple passes, with all the other machines when it comes to metal, you have to do it in one pass. Now you'll notice that the top gets kind of dirty so it's sprayed, you know, just to remove some of the grit. It doesn't really matter for this process, uh, whether it's dirty or clean, because everything will get dirty anyways, once it's removed off the sheet. And as you can see, water shooting up here, there, everywhere, but it's not right underneath, and that's because of the MDF that we have there. What the MDF does is prevents the water from shooting back up right where the plate is. It shoots up around the plate instead. Water jet is an amazing machine, um, but it doesn't replace any other machine. It's just something sort of in your repertoire of things that you can do with different materials based on the design. So for instance here, if this plate was here was, you know, three times bigger, or there were less holes or whatever, uh, plasma cutting it would have been great. Uh, plasma cutting is a lot faster. You could also do thicker plate uh, for something like this here. Because uh, water jet get exponentially slower the thicker the plate goes. Same thing with fiber laser cutting. 
uh, but with plasma cutting you cut very thick but you start losing resolution so again there's no perfect tool out there to do the perfect every job so it's nice having a whole bunch of different tools and then you pick the best tool for the job given so if you want custom plates like this made any size any shape any material contact me at cncara.com we'll cut it for you and ship it right to your door